Hi, everybody. Dave Chalmers, Chief Commercial Officer at LMN. Thank you so much for joining our webinar today called Succession Planning, Building Value in Your Landscape Business. We have two amazing and really, really, really talented business owners with us today, Adam and Sarah Lineman. They have a landscaping company that they've been running for a number of years now called Lineman Lawn Care and Landscaping. They also have a consulting firm called The Green Executive. Sarah focuses on the operations and the finance side of their landscape business, which actually makes for a perfect fit in the consulting practice. Uh, she helps companies all across the nation, not just on how to understand your numbers, uh, but how to build strategies uh, towards um, having a profitable business. Uh, Sarah is an LMN certified consultant and a QuickBooks certified pro advisor. Um, so if there's anybody to help with the financials in the P&L, it's absolutely Sarah. Adam, founder and CEO of The Green Executive. Um, and The Green Executive is a, is a landscaping industry peer group and consulting firm. So it's multifaceted. Um, Adam has over 26 years of experience in the landscape industry and has grown his nationally recognized landscape company from the bottom up. He actually started at the age of 14, uh, started with one employee, uh, grew it to over 25 uh, in no time. Very experienced with uh, business acquisitions, strategic planning, marketing, you name it, been there, done that. Really, really, really strong as well in goal setting, accountability, you know, financial data, and helping organizations understand what it takes to get to the next level, what they need to focus on, what they need to retool. Uh, Adam is also an LMN certified consultant, uh, retired trailblazer from the NALP. Um, he has uh, been featured in several trade magazines, uh, Landscape Management, Turf, Lawn and Landscape Magazine, Green Industry Pro. Also, my favorite uh, item, uh, Adam is also a retired uh, police officer, and I'm sure uh, in serving his community um, in that uh, area as well, um, he found uh, a lot of incredible um, experiences uh, transferred over into his work in the landscape industry. So welcome to the webinar, Adam and Sarah. Thank you so much for your time. We're certainly looking forward to learning as much as we can from you today. Thanks, Dave. Thanks for the intro. We're excited. And yeah, wow, Dave makes you feel like a million bucks, doesn't he? You know? <laughs> he does. He does. He I really does. So thank you for that and for sharing with our audience a little bit of what we're about. Do you want to dig right in? Let's dig right in. All right, let's do it. All right. So well, there he is. <laughs> that 14 year old. 14 years old. Uh, <laughs> First riding lawnmower, started uh, maintaining properties around our neighborhood. And uh, the photo on the right uh, on our screen is also um, where we were. We need to update our picture, but that picture just a couple years ago. So mm -hmm. uh, we, we grew our business and um, still running it actively today. Oh, yeah. So let's talk a little bit about uh, some, some stats here and then some other key points. Did you know that 93% of small and medium-sized landscape companies don't build a budget? I knew that. That amazes me. But but if you think about where back in the day, it wouldn't have surprised you. You probably never crossed your mind in the first place. But when you know better, you can do better, right? Also, you know, one thing that you need to consider doing is paying yourself what you're worth. You know, 45% of landscape business owners, they don't budget to pay themselves. Yeah. That, is, that is also crazy. And I know one way what I started doing back uh, was actually just paying myself a very little amount, uh, minimum wage at the time. You have to get yourself started somehow, right? And if you think you can't afford it, um, definitely make that a priority. Progress is still progress. You, you got to start somewhere. That's right. Uh, so start uh, to get good credit and, uh, and good standing with your local banks, transitioning from renting to owning. Uh, you know, having good uh, relationship with your bank has mm -hmm. been crucial to our success. And even most recently, Sarah, with the, yeah. with the pandemic and applying for um, the PPP loans and things like that. Right. Yeah. More and more, we, we realize the value in that and are thankful for the relationships that we've been able to build. And we didn't go out intentionally. Do it. it just kind of happened for us. But if there 
if I'm not happy with a bank, I'm absolutely going to go intentionally start building a relationship, uh, make a lunch date with a banker, set up an appointment to go in and, and meet with them. Uh, sit down and dream. You know, what is a top-notch, well-oiled landscaping company look like to you? Um, you know, a goal without a plan is just a wish. So you have to have some sort of planning in place mm -hmm. and a goal set that you can achieve um, and su you know succeed and move yourself on to the next level. Man, I'd take that, that what does the top notch look like? Sketch it out, cut it out of a magazine and put it right in front. There you go. Yep, and then you gotta get there. How are we gonna get there? Vision. How are we gonna get there? Vision. So vision is, I used to hear a lot about vision, mission and value statements. Um, you don't necessarily hear that some more, but that doesn't mean they're not important. And that also doesn't mean you have to call it a vision. Um, a vision to me and kind of um, my everyday speech, my layman's terms is, where do we want to go? What do we want to be known as? So at the end of the day or years from now, or if people are talking in our community, what do I want them to know Lindemann Lawn Care and Landscaping as? And would you like to share there? Yeah, what just, you know, just is? your vision is going to be your overall um, broad um, look at where you want your business, to, like you said, to be. And the thing that we want people to realize is that your vision can definitely change. Oh, yeah. um, and so that's something that you should always be um, talking uh, with your team about, uh, obviously with, with and mulling things over with yourself and see where you really want your business to go and, and, uh, and flourish to. Right. And, and you touched on a good point there where this isn't just necessarily what's in your head. It's what is in your head starts with you as, as if you're the owner or you and your team is the key because it takes all of you to get there. So it takes all of you to know what that vision is, where you're going, what you want to be known as. At Lindemann Lawn Care should be the preferred lawn and landscape company in our market area. So we have our area. We want to be the go-to in our kingdom. Absolutely. Right? <laughs> um, mission goes right along with your vision. Mission is how are we going to get there, right? So we know what we want to be. We want to be preferred mm -hmm. in our area, but how are we going to make that happen? I always like to think of a mission as what are you going to do on a daily basis to um, achieve yeah. your vision, right? Right. So if you're sitting down going to work, is what I'm doing today going to get me there? There you go. Let's That's talk right. about some values. Values. What do you consider that, like, what are the, how do the values fit into all of this? Sure. Um, so I think, you know, values are um, what, once again, you, what, what you are, um, I don't want to say made of, but what's, what's, What's the to me it's the non-negotiable. There you go. It's the it's the as we go through the daily mission of getting towards our goal or our vision, what are the things that we're not willing to give up and that are really um key pieces of value to us in our day in, day out? Not only to us, but also our team. So For when sure. we came up with our mission, our vision, our core values. This was a process that didn't just happen over one meeting with our team and, and thinking upon these things ourselves. This was something that we came upon uh, and developed over months and months of um, coming up with these. And so it's important to get everybody's feedback uh, when you are developing your mission and vision and values, uh, because once again, you know, you want your team involved and they're actually the people that, um, Make the dream happen a lot of the time so right so so everyone being in agreement and knowing what are the non-negotiables as we go through our daily to get to the vision then uh that's that's key there sure. you go so what does success look like you know how do you know if you succeeded what's your thoughts sarah well i'm a big proponent of you need to know who you are and get right with yourself before you can work on other things, yourself personally and yourself as a business. So we need to know who are we as a, as a business and how will we know if we're the preferred person in our market area? How will we know if we succeeded in our vision? How will we know if we have made it there and continue to be, or do we need a new vision? And you know, so on and so on. So it's kind of a, a refinement thing like you touched on before, but for me, success is, I want to run on all cylinders. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I want the whole team working together. I want efficiency. I want I want the whole package. Sure. That's what for me. Per, if you're asking me personally, that's what I want. How about you? So you know, I want to make mention obviously stats, right? So if you're in the mm -hmm. black, if you're actually making a profit in your business, that could be one component uh, sure. that that tells you that you're that you're succeeding. To me, the biggest thing that uh, came upon uh, my company was that 
I could go on a two-week vacation at a certain point in time and know that my company is running profitably without me being present and know that things are, are just a okay. Adam really likes vacation, so I should have predicted that he would say that. But it's true. That was kind of family-wise, that was a big turning point when we were able to not be chained to the business. It's all about processes and procedures, and we'll talk a little bit about that here in just a little bit. That's my jam. All right. So, you know, you can if you can delegate right and when we talk about delegating we're talking about having good um, people on the right seat of the bus having operation managers um, sales people things like that so this is all about building worth and how you can do that so right. you want to you want to be able to delegate that's well, for sure and when you were 14 you didn't necessarily think what's this business going to become well you probably didn't even realize you had a business in the first place but so often we see companies that just go away and we're like, well, they had value there. You know, they really had value. They could have sold it. They could have passed it on to somebody or they could have stepped away and let someone else run it. So um, succession could have many different looks to it. And, and we don't know if we'll ever sell or if we'll ever pass it down to our boys or what the case may be, but um, your business has value in it and helping you hone in and keep that value high is something we want to talk about today. And these are all ways that you can do that. Absolutely. So uh, the vacation, the vacation, the Fairmont <laughs> Mayacoba in Cancun, right? Yeah, it was. So this was a trip we went on, which we can't wait to get back there. You actually earned that trip. I did. So I was working for a, a different company at the time and it, it was a trip we earned and happily went on and we're able to step away from the company, which was great. We weren't chained to it anymore where there was a time we, we definitely were, but so you know delegation, what it does, uh, what it does for you, it builds business independence, allows you to focus on income producing tasks, right? And, and that's not always easy to do because you're so used to doing this is my thing and this is what I like to do. But if you're sitting there and I find myself guilty of this, somebody else could be doing this. I need to focus on what I'm best at and let them focus on what they can do really well. So yeah let them do it and the other thing i wanted to mention too is you know upon delegation allows the owner to do other things such as networking and, and things like that so mm -hmm. you know i'm a member of a, a bni type group i'm a member of uh rotary clubs and chamber of commerce mm -hmm. commerces and and be able to go out and meet with other like-minded professionals and to be able to make friends and then build relationships is really important it also gets you away from the daily of working in your business and lets you work on your business just taking that little time out whether it's you know meeting with a group over lunch or meeting with an associate we're kind of digressing but <laughs> all those are good good things they let you focus is the key where i was going with that absolutely so where do you start where do you start? Because that delegation is kind of a hard, hard thing for people to let go sometimes and to trust because it definitely takes trust. But you got to start somewhere. Progress is still progress. So, you know, you starting by building a strong company culture. Once again, having a good team in place. Right. Sharing those values, that mission, vision. That's all part of it. Caring for your team. You know, if, if you if anybody knows me, I like to cook. So I mm -hmm. like to do lunches for the team. Um, you know, bring them out, uh, some candy bars out in the field, things like that. Have a good company culture. Bust out the nacho machine. Bust out the nacho we machine. Nacho machine. And, uh, and, you know, keep them, keep them engaged uh, and, yeah, just make sure that they are on board with us, right? And, and open communication. How can you help each other? Absolutely. We, and that last one, I know we have a thing where a lot of times people will ask, hey, I'm thinking about hiring some help. I'm um, really not sure I need someone to answer the phones. I'm not, that's a little scary for us. If you think you need to hire someone, you probably should have already done it. Like you're already beyond the point. So, so do it and using an LMN budget can help you see what you need to cover those expenses. Awesome. Good stuff. My favorite. Get comfortable with being uncomfortable. What does that mean, Sarah? The more you push yourself, the more you let someone handle something, even though it makes you a little bit nervous, the next time it's going to be a little less nervous and then a little less nervous. And it's going to get more and more comfortable for you to step out of your zone and build the team trust and let them deal with it because it's okay. It'll be okay. You can still keep an eye on it. That's important too. Ah, systems and procedures. There's our uh, director of first impressions. It is. So that's Peggy. Peggy. We like to say we have the Peggy factor because Peggy is um, a really key part in the company. And um, 
the reason she's here is because it all starts with her. When the phone rings, she has a process that she goes through, right? And it's repeatable. She does it every single time. And we're, as a team, all on the same page as far as what that process is. So she takes a call and then this happens, this happens, this happens. It's consistent. It's happening every time. I know what to expect when that phone rings. She knows what to expect when that phone rings as far as the process and procedures, how we deal with that call. Absolutely. And, you know, and uh, we could uh, get into probably a little bit more deeper, but I just wanted to mention, you know, she's screening the customer a little bit at first. She's putting all that information into um, the LMN CRM. And like you said, it's recordable, it's scalable, and mm -hmm. we're ready to, she helps us continue to grow. Yeah, for sure. Um, and she's using um, technology and things that we're going to talk about too, because it's all tied together. It's all a full package and um, a package that's going to grow as our business continues to grow. It's scalable. Got to start somewhere. You do have to start somewhere. So you want to make sure everybody's on the same page and you know standard operating procedures. Like we talked mm -hmm. about that a little bit. Um, what is a SOP? So an SOP, you you may or may not have one written out in form right now. But if you sat down and said, when that phone rings or when this happens, this is what we do. And boom, you have your SOP. That's all it is, really. It's an outline of how do we literally handle this step by step by step so that if someone were to walk into the company or walk into that role from within the company, they can see, hey, this is how we do it. And then, you know, they can change too, right? So oh, sure. you want to continuously look at those every mm -hmm. so often and refresh them. It might change uh, based on the time of year and your seasons that you're going through in your company. Um, mm -hmm. It could change based off of personnel. There's all different types of things why it could change, but having something in place um, is really valuable. Mm -hmm. And I think um, really when we started to see the value in these a lot was when we started using LMN more or any a new system a new product a new piece of equipment okay how how do we do this and that's when you see the value in a standard operating procedure so that um, one person figures it out and then they can go to the rest of the team and say hey i figured out how to do this this is our standard operating procedure this is the way i think it will work really well for all of us and we refresh it renew it as needed um, the bottom point key company info should always be held by the company is really important to me because our companies have so many moving parts and it's really really hard for Adam to know all the parts that are going on or any key person or any individual to know all those moving parts that are happening and it's also not fair to you to take that burden on yourself right so I like to think of the company as its own individual entity it has its own information and the company information should be accessible by everyone. The benefit to that, and if you're using a system like Element where you can put all that information in, the benefit of that is that if any one of those moving parts has to step away, then the information is still held in one place. It's not in my head, it's not in my computer, it's the company information that's held there for the company to continue. So if any, um, if I wanted to pass the company on, um, that information is still there. That value and in the information, all the client contacts, where we are with everyone, all our financial information, that's all held within the company, not within all these different platforms or people's heads or notepads or anything like that. So have it in one place. Have it in one place and um, being able to say here it is if i ever wanted to sell or if i was looking at a company to buy if they could hand it over to me and say hey here's where i am with things are you interested in buying my company that's great sarah. hi yeah. sarah it's hey. uh it's dave just jumping in real quick we had a question come in from from one of the uh attendees right. um can you share uh, a little bit more about the all the information in one place, and and the question is really around uh, decision making. Do you do you find that uh, decision making is is easier when it's all in in one place, or is that uh, is that uh, irrelevant? That that doesn't matter. I think it really helps, and it, it depends on what decision we're we're referring to. But the one that comes to mind is if we're deciding to maintain relationships with a client. So that's where 
if I have all of our contacts with that client, all the estimates we've given to them, all the times they've accepted or declined those estimates, every time I've had to call them for past dues on making payments, every time that we've they've called to compliment or complain about the services they've offered, if I can see all that in one place, whether it was Peggy calling them and dealing with them or them calling in the office, or me or the sales team calling them, if I can see that in one place, it's really easy for me to decide if I want to continue working with that client. Would you have any? Yeah, no, I agree, that, that's that's great. And then, you know, kind of back to the same thing too, um, with maybe your SOPs, once mm -hmm. again, having them, having them in all one place, you know, uh, we utilize things like Dropbox and things like that to keep it all mm -hmm. in one location, all of our, uh, policy manuals, SOPs, right. job descriptions. Once again, everybody knows where they're at. Right, and um, it brings me, makes me think of we had a dog bite incident, and as time goes on, hopefully we don't have to address anything with that again. But if we we ever were have to have something come up with that, then we can go right into that one place and look at all the emails back and forth to the client, all the times we called them about it, um, the documentation of the photographs of what happened in the incident, um, the employee statement, all of that is in one place instead of something like that, who knows, it could come up a year from now. And if I was having to look in my email, Adam's email, photos, all of that, it would be a lot of uh, different places and definitely does help with decision making, I think so. Hope that answers your question. If not, absolutely <laughs> tell us, uh, ask us again or uh, in another way and we'll be sure and get it to you. But um, back to building your worth, once you've got all that information in one place, um, when you're going out and looking at a system, make sure it's one that can grow with you. I mean, obviously when you were 14, you didn't think about <laughs> think about all this, right? But, but now um, we've been through growing pains and we know when we're investing, we wanna invest in something that's gonna be long-term. Technology, right? I know you love those stickers. Oh, I love those stickers. <laughs> so we have these stickers on all of our uh, salespeople's phones inside of our office. And it's just a reminder that uh, sometimes email and uh, mm -hmm. sending a text message isn't always the best thing. You know, having the, uh, even though it's, it's still over the phone, but having more of a personal conversation um, is important. So pick it up and continue oh, using uh, um, that to, to make money and connect. Right, so the um, phone system there is actually some technology that we invested in last year, I think, yeah. and we can't imagine not having it now. Um, but there's lots of ways that you can enhance your business. We talk about equipment a lot. Don't forget that equipment and technology can help you on your overhead side of things too, and help you in build those processes and procedures and really streamline things and make them kind of a your go-to system for how you do your day in and day out. Right. Where do you start with that, Adam? Where do you start? You gotta start somewhere. You do. So, you know, like you said, um, you wanna choose a system that can grow with you and have something, um, you know, that's just gonna work out well for the company. So, like you said, you wanna reinvest in the business. There's so many times that we see people go out and, you know, they have no hesitation to spend um, $3,000 on an aerator or $40,000 on a truck. Why not? spend some money like you mentioned mm -hmm. on technology and overhead because it helps out a lot yeah they pay off for you too you know they're going to save you time and and again be, enable you to document all that things keep the, everything in one place and you're able to go all in with it because it's if everyone's on the same page it really helps the flow of work through those processes and procedures this is our team so the right people, what do they do for you know everything, right? So your team, I mean, if you didn't have a good team, whether it's for any company, you're not gonna get very far. So, so. we started putting this together and what what do they do for you? You know, we when we put something together, we talk it out like this, or we start with an outline and, and we said everything, they do everything. No, seriously, mm -hmm. <laughs> they do everything because there's no way Adam or I could run this and do all this by ourselves, right? We need everyone to contribute their best skills to the company. And it's our job to make sure we're letting those skills shine. Yeah, and you know, as you can see in the picture here too, we don't just talk the talk, we have our vision, mission, and core values up on our inside of our, our warehouse. We talk with our team about those on a regular basis. 
uh, we do the safety meetings, we uh, have the open communication with the team, and that's really important. Yeah, it really is, and we're all um, we're all working towards that same same goal day in and day out. So you want to have clear responsibilities, right? And uh, and job descriptions for your team super important to to, to where they know what um, they're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. So there's no question there. And on both sides, right? They know what they need to do. We know what we can expect of them, and vice versa. We want them to know what they can expect from us. You know what they. Um, should ask us for and what we want to provide to them and if you have those clearly defined and of course they're going to change you know refresh and renew is needed but if those are clearly defined if any one of them needs to step away or we have someone from the outside coming in or someone from the inside moving around then it's really easy to say here this is this is who we have this is what we do this is the role and this is what's expected of it so whether it be for a new position a current position you never know what's going to happen and even if you don't anticipate any handoffs or trade-offs within our business wide it's still good to touch base with people and and make sure you're all still on the same page all right, so let's, we're going to talk a little bit more about, um, you know, what it looks like during a purchase or a sale and what a company, what a purchaser of a company and what uh, will look at uh, whenever they're wanting to make that transaction and what makes it worth more, right? So some of this information here um, we got from Ron Edmonds from the Principium Group. Ron is a friend of ours. Um, he specializes in green industry mergers and acquisitions. And when I interviewed him back, these are some of the things he talked about. So I want to kind of go through these uh, somewhat quick. Some of them we'll get into a little more detail. But what makes your business worth something? A so, value. You know, whether you're wanting to me, it's whether you're wanting to sell it or not. Like even if I want to hand it off to our kids or whatever the case may be, I still want value. I, I like having that value in all of these. My business has a worth, and this is a way to kind of measure that. So obviously, you know, size, um, historical profitability, though, if you have good financials, if you're organized, if you have uh, good bookkeeping skills, if you can go back and provide the last three to five years or so of what your business has uh, grossed in revenue and what is net profited, net profited, it's, <laughs> uh, if you can provide that, um, you know, it's going to show a track record, right, of, of good financials. Um, same thing with record of growth. Um, your equipment, you know, it's so important to have good equipment stuff that's mm -hmm. not rusty and old and breaking down all the time but you have good equity um, built up yeah that you've reinvested um, service pricing you know we talk uh, about that sometimes and that you know are you really making money in different parts or divisions of your business so it's important to make sure mm -hmm. um, you know where you're making your most money from as yeah well. so not only how much money are you bringing in but how are you bringing it in sure um, I like I'm gonna move on down to uh, customer concentration. So we have the Linneman Kingdom, uh, which is simply a, a big map on our... It might have been in the picture with Peggy. It was. It's on the wall by her. Um, and so um, a big map, and it shows our concentration of our clientele. Uh, we use a, a map on, on our wall. You can also see that in LMN, right, on in the mm -hmm. time part and, and the, the, the scheduling and whatnot. But it's important to have uh, your clients grouped close together so you can be efficient and get to your properties quickly. Um, and then, you know, having a strong management team, certifications, degrees definitely makes your company worth more if you're ever going to be um, thinking about selling it down the road. So things and there's that, more. And there is more. There is more. So things to think about, you know, if your company goes up for sale or not, or if you're going to buy a company, you know, owner and seller involvement, will he or she be involved in that? Or are they just simply going to walk away, right? Mm -hmm. Is there going to be a transition period there? Uh, age of the business, um, area of service. We kind of talked about that Linum and Kingdom a little bit more. Competitive analysis. Sarah, do you know what a competitive analysis is or do you want me to kind of explain uh, a little bit more? Competition in the, in the kingdom. In the kingdom. There you go. <laughs> so, you know, I like to do a competitive analysis, you know, we'll kind of see what the competitor's charging, we'll kind of see what the competitor's doing as far as how quickly are they turning the estimates around, um, are they showing up on time, so we're kind of looking at um, what they're doing, and not that you want to pay too much attention to that, right. but I think it's still important every once in a while, every several years, to, just to kind of keep your eye on them a little bit. Right, it's just like when you're buying or selling a house. You have your house, home's value, but they also do a comparison of similar houses in the area, right? 
There you go. You know, systems and procedures in place, do you have an active marketing plan that you can show, right, um, to anybody? I and mean, it's, it's important, collection procedures. I'll let you hit on that uh, briefly. Sure, it's um, same as a standard operating procedure, right? You still have a procedure in place to get that money in when maybe your customers aren't quite so free at paying their invoices. So um, an SOP, just so everyone's on the same page, and it goes hand in hand with those processes and procedures. Hey, we have a standard operating procedure. This is what we do it. It's routine, it's consistent. So if somebody were to take over the business or if I wasn't available, because I do the um, the collections at Linum and Lawn Care, but if, if I were for whatever reason removed from the situation, someone else could step in and know exactly this is how we do it. And the same is true for any other, if the, the business can continue on. Business software, right? Is it in the cloud? Mm -hmm. I mean, that is super important for act for accessibility out in the field, um, and you know, just having all your information in one one place. And then, what's the social media performance? You know, everybody's on uh, on in social media nowadays. I I read a in one of the trade magazines uh, census that 54% of um, and, and these necessarily are your clients, but 54% of landscapers are on Facebook. So, you know, do you have good performance, though, with engagement and um, likes and things like that with inside your organization? Well, and that kind of backs it up to customer service in general. You know, a client scorecard, how are how are you performing? Do you have a lot of clients, but they don't stick around for a while? You know, they, they come in and they come right out the door. That's also something that's pretty key when you're looking at um, buying or selling a business. How long have the clients been there? Let's talk about some advantages of reoccurring revenue. So it typically does make a business worth more because uh, you're gonna be servicing those customers for year after year after year, generally. Um, it could be used uh, strategically as a part of your retirement plan, perhaps. I mean, I, you mm -hmm. know, you don't necessarily wanna count on this 100%, but you're building value in your business and it could be just one little extra egg in your basket of uh, exit strategy and building value. Right, especially, we've all seen, especially lately that Things can change rather quickly. You never know what's going to happen, but you plan for the norm. And then, you know, scaling without your uh, hands-on involvement, once again, um, teachable, valuable, repeatable. Um, can the business operate without the owner being present? Right. And and we see this a lot with, say, husband and wife teams where the, the husband does everything. The wife helps or she knows they have the business owned together, but then what if something happened to the husband? So not only would the wife have to deal with all that, but also how could she help that business carry on? And so many times all that information is just in someone's head and, and that's not going to enable the, the business to carry on. So just to kind of start wrapping up uh, the webinar, you know, some key points, you know, have a vision, mission and some values in place and be organized, right? Um, delegation, delegation, delegation. <laughs> so important, um, you know, using the proper equipment and so on. Um, building value that's scalable and teachable and then have those systems and procedures in place so your business can thrive yeah really important it really is and it will thrive it definitely will so we have some words of wisdom i think it's super super important to be involved with with some sort of a professional association such as the nalp or landscape ontario even if you go down to your state organizations be involved you're going to be mm -hmm. educated and, and kept in the loop of what's going on all the time if you're involved with those and, associations. And your community organizations too, whatever speaks to your heart, whatever organization you wanna get involved in, it's a great way to stay in touch with the businesses in your local community. Um, one of the things I wish I would have done back years and years ago is hired a business uh, mentor or a consultant a little bit earlier. Um, you know, they're worth their weight in gold um, for what you pay them and what you can get out of um, mm -hmm. being able to jump ahead and uh, build your business so much faster. So definitely so another person to get your back, right? That's right. So someone you can bounce uh, questions off of and just help you simply grow your business. Um, you know, know your numbers and understand your financials. Once again, years ago, I was struggling with that. And uh, as we as we learned a lot of things, as we worked with consultants ourselves before we started consulting. As we met. As we met. <laughs> um, no, we started understanding our financials more. Yeah. And LMN was a, a, a very key role in helping us do that as well. So, you know, um, understand your financials and know what to charge and why you're charging. Mm -hmm. um, find a hobby, what you enjoy and make time for it. 
I like to cook. I like the barbecue. <laughs> I go on vacation. I go on vacation. I enjoy vacation as well. Um, one thought rang in my head when you were talking about knowing your numbers and financials. That helps you make decisions too, big time. Um, once you can understand what the numbers are telling you, and you have a feel for your business, right? You you have a feeling of what's going on, but sometimes those numbers really put it over the top for you and put in black and white what your gut has been telling you. So it reinforces you that way. And sometimes the answers are surprising. So back to that decision-making question, knowing your numbers really helps with that as well. And, uh, you know, first and foremost, the most important thing obviously is family and the good health. So um, keep everybody healthy and well, those last two points, the hobby and your family time, those help you regroup and refocus. And whenever you can get right with yourself and really have a, um, when you're a better human being, right? Larry would say, Larry Wynette, when you're a better human being, you can be a better business person. Like it. Love it. <laughs> oh, looky there, there it is, the green egg. So we're doing a uh, a, give it a, a giveaway this fall. All you have to simp do is simply enter in uh, thegreenexecutive.com forward slash offer, enter to win. We're actually giving away a free facility tour for two people. All you have to do is get to us, but we're gonna show you a, in-depth tour of our own landscaping facility and uh, you're going to get to meet our key people spend some time with our salespeople, our operations managers and so on so enter to win we're going to be doing a drawing for that this fall um, so we're looking forward to that and then, we like having company we do and then i'm going to cook for you also on the big green egg mm -hmm. and cook you either a steak uh, dinner or some barbecue and sarah's got something she wants to talk about as well i am super 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 excited about um a ladies group that we're starting up in May. So we have a couple of peer groups already, but this one's a little different because we want those leading ladies. Um, the We find that a lot of times the ladies have a little bit unique experience within the landscaping company um, in our industry in general. So we wanna bring those together and where we can share each other's insight into specific issues that we're dealing with and really dig in creating this group to meet once a month at least and support each other. So we would love to get you some more information on that. And you can go to thegreenexecutive.com forward slash ladies dash group. And I would love to talk to you about it. Awesome. Yeah, I'm excited. Can you tell I'm excited? I am <laughs> really excited about it. I can't wait to share with these ladies. So here's some uh, contact information to reach out uh, if you'd like to do so and our phone numbers and just shoot us an email though info at thegreenexecutive.com or connect with us on Facebook or uh, or LinkedIn. Yeah, the socials, we're on the socials a lot. So <laughs> Thank you so much everybody for listening. I think uh, LMN has uh, one more uh, slide they want to talk about. That's great. Thank you so much, Adam and Sarah. I do have a closing question for you. Um, by the way, Sarah, also really excited um, with your uh, Women in Landscape Leadership um, peer group. Uh, we will certainly uh, support that and, and, and get the message out. That is going to be a fantastic group to be a part of. Um, one question to close. Um, obviously, you know, COVID-19 has, uh, um, has been uh, quite disruptive. Um, to, to our industry. You have the, the fortunate opportunity, Adam and Sarah, to, to work with, with companies right across the nation. Um, can you maybe give some feedback to some landscape companies who are starting to get back to work under you know, some, uh, some restrictive conditions and they, they, they need to retool? their revenue line is not going to be what they had forecasted, but what are some things that, that they can do now that they're getting back out uh, into the field, but maybe not at full capacity? And then part two is for those organizations who are maybe still in a state where there is some, some shelter in and they're not quite yet uh, out in the field, what do you recommend um, that they focus on and, and they be working on um, during this uh, this very difficult time. You want to start? Well, I think the the first thing is that you know if if you're pretty confident that you are um, not going to be having the same projected sales revenue that you're going to have is definitely adjust your budget, and you mm -hmm. can pretty simply do that in LMN and, and the budgeting. So take a look at that. Uh, maybe do a a backup budget as like a worst case scenario. So you can mm -hmm. you can do that. 
Um, and the other thing I want to mention is, you know, don't stop your advertising all the way. If you're going to scale it back a little bit, okay, but definitely keep pushing your advertising. Um, once again, right now, if you're People are at home a lot. Make sure you're ramping up your social media um, advertising um, and just staying in front of them. Right. Um, maybe you want to throttle back, but you don't want to turn the throttle off because you still want that pipeline going because we're going to recover from this. It might take a while, but it, it's going to recover eventually. Um, if you're just now able to get back, there's a lot of things follow-up wise that you can do. So I think follow-up is something that tends to fall through the cracks, especially this time of year when traditionally everyone's really, really busy. But let's think back to a year ago, six months ago, even further, if you've touched base with people or someone has reached out to you in the past about a project, they may or may not have gotten it done. And maybe they can't go on their summer vacation now. I mean, that's a lot of maybes, but you never know until you reach out to them and ask. I was going to mention, so now is the time also that uh, maybe be pushing the staycations, right? Be, mm -hmm. be pushing the, the water features, the outdoor living spaces, the pools, um, if you are able to do that type of work, um, or if you're not right now in the very near future, because people are going to remember what it was like to uh, stay stay cooped up, right? They're mm -hmm. never going to forget how they, how they felt. Right. They're never going to forget how they and their family felt going through all this. And that's not to say you can't sell now and get it on the calendar for when you can do it. So you're going to be able to get back to work eventually. We all don't know for sure, but you can still keep that pipeline moving. Keep putting stuff in the pipeline. Keep putting those estimates out there. Keep reaching out to your clients. Um, if you're not able to go full throttle right now and um, you want to, take some of your time that is available to you and focus on your business, which is always a good idea to, to set aside some time to do that. But if you've got a little extra right now, take a look at reevaluating, refreshing and renewing your standard operating procedures. If you don't have them, or if you don't have these vision, mission and core values, take a notepad, sketch it out. Hey, who are we? What are we all about? What do we wanna be? And how do we do things? Take a call from start to finish. Um, those are kind of broad level things. And then you can drill down into your budgets. Maybe you've always been thinking about doing a divisional budget, but haven't got around to it. Now's the time, right? Th things like that. Those projects that someday I'd like to make a list of those and start digging in. We always um, do our, our budgets and our planning and things like that over the winter. So because of this pandemic happening in the late winter, early spring, um, to us, we're just looking at this as just an extension of the slow time. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, be doing the things, it, like what Sarah mentioned, if you haven't already started that, get on some of those SOPs and, and budget adjustments. I mean, there's always those projects. We have them, too. The things like, oh, we really we really want to look at this or think about that. or There's always that li that running list in our heads. And, let, you know, get that out of your head, put it on a piece of paper, put it in front of you, and get to town. Excellent. Okay. Excellent, fantastic answer. Always really, really, really great practical um, advice from, from you, uh, Adam and Sarah. We will make sure that everybody has your contact information. We will make sure that everybody has a, a recording um, uh, of this presentation. Thank you for taking the time. Uh, we just had one item to close, which is um, ongoing education um, is really important for for the, the team at LMN. And we truly cherish the opportunity to work with all of the talented landscapers um, in the marketplace in doing whatever part that we can uh, to help make them um, you know, better business people or drive for profitability, help them achieve their goals. Um, we've moved our, our workshops online for greater access. And uh, Adam and Sarah are uh, two of our uh, key and brilliant facilitators um, for those workshops. So please join in. There's uh, an incredible amount of uh, information and detail in uh, in those workshops. LMN Academy continues to provide companies with uh, incredible education, helping staff um, again to to retool and uh, and and build for growth. And then when we look at our support team, and obviously these webinars, our goal is to try to put uh, best of of breed um, support staff uh, from industry available via chat, email, phone. Um, our crew is here uh, to try and make sure that uh, 
uh, we can be that trusted brand and, and vendor as we manage both difficult times, as Adam and Sarah uh, spoke about, as well as we're going to get through this and, and there will be uh, uh, a time for us to uh, build in, a, in an up market. But we have to do it together. Um, and again, thank you so much, Adam and Sarah, for your time today. Um, wishing you the best. Stay safe. And thank you, everyone, for attending. Take care, everybody. Bye. Thanks so much.